This steel mill is going digital, and this man is overseeing the transformation. Now the slabs of crude steel weighing tons are controlled by computers, and customers have a direct input, telling the computers what they want in terms of amounts and dimensions. We get relatively short notice. About 24 to 48 hours in advance, the customers specify how they want the material milled that's already in slab form. And they tell us when. So our technology has to be capable of reacting fast. You might say our rolling line has to be able to mill pretty much anything, any day. Most of the mill's customers are car makers. They order on short notice, and amounts and specifications vary widely. Currently, ThyssenKorp can only meet about 70% of delivery dates. The steel giant is feeling the pressure. That's also because competitors in China are flooding the market with their steel. And it's cheaper. The Chinese government subsidizes production. So enabling customers to link their systems with the rolling mill is an important strategy to keep their business. They no longer order by telephone or fax, but provide their specifications in real time. Data security is always a challenge. Cyber attacks on networks are getting bigger and bigger. And we can't afford to let unauthorized parties influence a milling process or a manufacturing process. Some people, like steel trader Gisbert Rühl, believe the steel industry has waited too long to start upgrading. His company, Klöckner, is based in Duisburg. But he finds the employees he needs to revamp it here in Berlin. If the steel industry doesn't open up to the digital world by itself, someone from outside will open up the world of steel to digitalization. Silicon Valley has already shown the way in other industries. High-tech giants like Google and Apple have already revolutionized music and home electronics. Rühl has hired 20 programmers, web designers and data analysts to construct an online portal customers can use to order steel from him and from competitors, for which he gets a provision. These companies can generally deal with innovations well enough as long as they're gradual improvements to the products or processes, for instance. But if it's something radical, they have difficulties thinking outside the box. So it's important to build a separate unit. As Ruhl sees it, German companies are often too sluggish because they'll only market products that are already perfected. Ruhl says he learned a different approach from the American tech giants. We start out with tools that meet the minimum requirements, so the customers have something to work with. Then we develop the rest together with the customers, much as is the case with apps. ThyssenKorp is also making ever greater use of IT technology in other aspects of production, such as materials testing in the lab. If a test strip isn't entirely satisfactory, the data go to the mill immediately, so the computer can correct the manufacturing process. But doesn't this kind of automation cost jobs? I don't think it'll cost jobs, but it will change job requirements. We'll have to think more in terms of the whole process, more innovatively, and consider the flexibility and acceleration of the process. But I don't think employees and jobs are in danger. ThyssenKrupp plans to invest hundreds of millions of euros in digitalization. 250 software experts are already at work on it. Now it seems it's not steel workers' heavy industry needs as much as computer programmers.